everyone, my name is Daisy, and today I'm going to be presenting about Annie. Annie is a busy mom of three who, has, who just got home from work. It's her night to cook. However, she realizes that unfortunately, she forgot to thaw her chicken. She <laughs> frantically takes the chicken out of the fridge, flings it into the microwave, and prays for the best. She takes it out, looks at the clock, realizes that she's way behind schedule, and decides to throw it back into the fridge and save it for another day. She takes her sons to soccer practice, and they pick up food on the way. Two days later, she looks in the fridge, looking for food, spots the piece of chicken, takes it out, cooks it. Now, everything seems normal at first. However, the day later, her entire family it comes down with awful stomach aches, and her three children all have fevers of 101. Now, the doctor tells them that they have all contracted a case of salmonella. Annie's case, however, is not unique. Around the US every year, the CDC reports that there are approximately a million people who contract food poisoning, 19,000 hospitalizations, and 380 deaths. So my research goal was to make the 1 million, 19,000, and 380 zero. <laughs> <laughs> my hypothesis driving my experimental process was that the cause, the fine was the cause of the illness. And so these are the variables that I wanted to test. The microwave um, and other sources of thawing that Annie had access to. So hot water, fling the chicken on the counter, <laughs> cold water, and the refrigerator. So what I did was I mimicked exactly what Annie did. I put five pieces of chicken, one into each different thawing method, and then I stuck it in the refrigerator for two days. I took it out. Uh, swapped it, and then I plated it onto an agar petri dish and observed what happened the next day. And this is what I found. So the microwave plate looks nasty, and it has 379 pieces of bacteria, col uh, colonies. The hot water is a little bit better with 134, and here's where the good news starts to happen. The counter chicken only had 42, piece, two, 42 colonies. The Cold water only had 33, and best of all, the hot water, the cold, sorry, the refrigerator only had 17, a mere 17. So the reason behind this is actually not as complicated as you might think. What happens in the microwave is that the outer surface of the chicken becomes too hot, and the inside is still frozen, which, cre which creates an ideal place for bacteria to thrive, which causes that to have so many more bacteria colonies. I also found out that salmonella is not the only type of bacteria that grows on chicken. There's also Staphylococcus, E. coli, and Campylobacter. So overall, um, what I found through the course of my studies is that surveys revealed that nine out of 10 people are not confident with how to properly thaw meat or chicken. And so what I hope going forward from today is that any time someone throws like decides to thaw their chicken in the microwave, you remember Annie, and, <laughs> and you saw it in the refrigerator. <laughs> That was great, and I'm sure, I, I'm sure we all learned a little something. And everybody who has chicken on the counter at home, is, you know. So, um, Emily, why don't we start with you? Yes, I have been Annie. <laughs> I've been there, so this is very relevant um, to my life. No, I thought it was great. I thought you painted the picture from the start. We knew what it was about um, from the start. We knew this was about salmonella. The visuals were perfect. Um, giving us a, you know, here's what I tested, here was the answer. I thought that was great. Um, the only question I had, and this might be weird, but what number does it have to be at for you to get salmonella? Mm -hmm. oh, so I wondered, like, okay, so if it's only 42 or whatever, can I get salmonella? I mean, I don't want to find out, but, you know, can I? <laughs> but, but it might be, you know, I, I was just thinking, oh, okay, so there's all these numbers, but what would that be? So, you know, just, just a very small, small criticism, but well done. Thanks. Well done. Mm -hmm. Eric? Yeah, I, I also thought that was great, and I loved the way you used a character to bring us into this experience, <laughs> because we can all imagine being Annie, and maybe this is, is just me, I think if you had a little more time, I was, oh, I was curious about the lab methods, where you sort of, you talk about a petri dish, and you talk about agar, and not everyone knows what that is, and so even just a few seconds of, you know, I 
took a, you know, a pipette or I took an eyedropper and, you know, how that swabbing actually happened, I think, could be really cool. But great job. I learned a lot. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Carrie. Yes. Um, very good point, Emily. Like, that is what an editor does, is they find your, the hole in your story. <laughs> and they, they ask a question that immediately comes to mind, and um, so you would be a great editor. Yeah, and I actually thought, uh, so well done. It, it, it was very journalistically structured. Like, it was, here's the anecdote. You know, an anecdote is worth a thousand data points. And then here's what's called the nut graph, which is the generalization that you can make. You know, the big picture, which is that many, many people get, get sick with bacteria every year. Um, and then uh, and then here's the public health message to take home with you. And so it was it felt a lot like a story that I would do actually, except that you actually did an experiment which is um, which which brought the story home. So great. Thank you so much. Yeah.